Not long ago, Fantex released some new water blocks. Well, we're gonna take a look at one of those today. So one of the things I really love to do with the computers is water cooling. So when I saw the Glacier 360A water block, this is the AMD version, um, from Fantex, I really wanted to mount it onto a motherboard, see what it looks like, and uh, at some point, see how it performs. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and unbox it first today, and then we are going to mount a Ryzen 9 3900X on the Crosshair 8 Hero, uh, the X570 platform motherboard, and uh, see what it looks like. All right, first things first, let's take a look at uh, what's in the box. Obviously, uh, it's the AMD AM4 socket. And uh, when you open it up, this is what you see actually. Technically, that's what you see. <laughs> but we're gonna move that out of the way as it is. So the first thing that strikes me is how large it appears. Obviously, there's no actual metal mounting brackets. It looks like right off the bat, it's coming out in a full um, acrylic uh, piece. And as you can see, it's fairly thick, so I can imagine that, it, or at least I hope, it won't uh, cause any stress or cracks um, from mounting. Obviously, you don't want to tighten it too, too much down when you're mounting to the motherboard. But just to give you an example, this is their previous version of water block. And it, the appearance is that it's taking up a lot more room. Obviously, this is an Intel mount, so the AMD one would be more squared off. But initially, it just has an appearance of being much larger. So that's the uh, previous gen uh, AM, or a Fantex. And then you've got the kind of the typical everyday EK block. And you can see again, it just seems to take up a, a lot more uh, surface area, or if you even compare it, contain it to like, um, or compare it to like a, one of the EK special blocks that they had for a little bit on their uh, supremacy edge line, which are kind of cool looking. Uh, but this is what the uh, new Fantex blocks look like. So to finish the unboxing, you know, obviously you have your block. Um, I mean, it looks clean. We're gonna go ahead and take that off now. This little peel. And that's what it looks like. Really clear, shiny, very clean looking. And one thing that is interesting is they give you these little metal plates. So if you like more of a chrome look in your system, this is going to cover where the RGB strip goes. Uh, and it's magnetic. But if you'd like to have more of the chrome look, you can do that. Or in the box here, they do include the black plate. So let's see what that looks like. And if you wanted to do an all black piece, now you can see my nail just barely touched it and I scuffed it. I don't like the, the brushed feeling on this. Obviously we can probably clean that off here with a, a nice uh, cloth, but you can see what that does. I mean, just fingerprints even right off the bat, it's rubbing the skin off. But that's how it would look with the black plate. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back. I prefer more of the chrome look, typically. We'll see what I end up doing with this with regards to a build. And then inside the box here, underneath here, we do have our thermal paste. Now the nice thing is Fantex does give you a pretty large uh, tube. Obviously, uh, I'm not gonna need that much, unless of course I'm The Verge, which some people have commented that they, they think I'm uh, taking my thermal paste application, um, my lessons from The Verge. What you don't know is actually I top them. So just FYI. <laughs> uh, your mounting hardware. Instruction manual, which I, I would suggest taking a look at. And then you have, what I'm assuming in here, is the <clears throat> RGB strip. Yep. So you have, oh, there's a connector anyway. Okay, here we go. You have your RGB node. So, get everything we need to get that hooked up so you can make it look all pretty and stuff. Uh, we will do that as well here. So I'm going to get this out of the way. And let's install it on the motherboard and see what it looks like. Okay, so pretty straightforward. I'm just, I'm not gonna do a motherboard overview here, obviously. But what we are gonna do is we're going to first off remove the standard M4 
mounting brackets. And we are going to go ahead and install our mounting screws and uh, put the plate on. All right, so let's get these undone here. And actually, before I do that, when we remove it, we're gonna leave this on here. This is going to be what the mounting screws are going to screw into and hold in place. Let's do this carefully. Obviously, when we're working with motherboard, we do wanna be uh, mindful that it is expensive electronic components and we don't wanna damage them. So I'm gonna use the uh, new Manta screwdriver kit that my wife and kids got me for my birthday. Uh, from iFixit and I love it. It's got some nice weight to it. The, everything's magnetic. They actually warranty their uh, bits for life. That's pretty amazing. Um, oh, I, I actually, I absolutely love these iFixit kits. I have the Manta driver kit as well as the Pro uh, tool kit and I use them literally almost daily. So as you can see, we're gonna leave these alone and doing it on top of this cardboard here will make it nice, or the, the, it's actual box will make it simple for a little tension. Uh, so first thing we're gonna do is install these four uh, mounting screws. And should you not want to use RGB lighting at all and you just want to use it as a good looking water block, that's what it looks like. And frankly, this almost looks like a mono block. I actually really like how it looks. I think it looks very clean. Um, but next, we wanted to install the RGB strip, which I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it installed or not. This is how you do it. You just simply remove that and you'll see here there's a little a connector right there, so you can see that well. And slide it into place. Put the plate back on, and then, and this is our addressable RGB, so you could very simply just run these wires up, and then you've got your, and these are your power, right? So let's say you have a Fantex case already, or a Fantex fans, such as, uh, or not the fans, but the halos. I guess even their digital RGB fans. You can plug that in and daisy chain them, if you will. Pretty nice. Obviously, I would do something like this with the RAM installed and try to run it out of the way so it's not seen very easily. Or I don't know, maybe I'd probably actually wrap it under. I don't really know what I'd do with this yet. I, I don't like wires. That's the biggest reason why I don't usually use RGB on water blocks is I hate the wires. But you do that and then R, and if you needed to plug it right into your motherboard, you got this as well, which would then hook in off of that. So really straightforward, but for now, I'm gonna take that out, leave it like that, because I am not too concerned about the RGB appearance. Very clean. Again, I really like how this fills the whole thing. That's about as simple of an installation as it gets for a uh, uh, CPU block of almost any kind. Uh, I like how that looks. Pretty simple, right? And I would say very clean. We got this uh, CPU block installed. It literally, it just takes minutes. Unscrewing the, um, the factory retention 
uh, pieces for the uh, AMD cooling system. Putting on the uh, set screws for Fantex. Installing the CPU block, some thermal paste, placing it on top and screwing in the retention screws. I mean, it's that simple. I think it looks very clean. I really like how it looks like a, almost a mono block. I mean, it's not, obviously, because it's not covering the VRMs or anything, but it does really, I guess, fill out that center portion of the motherboard, which I like the look of. Uh, I like the fact that it's got the plate on, plate on there so that you can actually cover um, where the RGB LEDs would be. You can change it out for black if you want to go for more of a black theme. With this motherboard, uh, either black or chrome will look really good. The um, I am just personally not a big fan of running wires all over the place, so I don't know, again, if I'm going to use the RGB cables with this or not. But at the price, this should be a really good um, CPU block to use. Very clean. Um, I like it. So that's my thoughts anyway. Uh, I think the next time around, I'm going to go ahead and hook up uh, this into a system, uh, see how the thermals perform, and then uh, we'll kind of go from there. Um, anyway, that's my thoughts for the day. So hopefully you liked today's video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button for me. If you didn't, you know what else to do. Hopefully it's not that. Hit that subscribe button for me because it really does help this channel grow. And uh, we will see you next week. Thanks.